Time to think rich. Be inspired by personal stories of success. Learn to invest without fear and greed. Ride the latest business trends. Dream big. Dare to be the Philippines' next billionario. I'm China Barachina. Follow me. Let's follow the money. Only here on Billionario Digital. Success is not final. Yan ang sabi ni Winston Churchill, dating Prime Minister ng United Kingdom at isa sa mga pinakamagaling na statesman na nakilala ng mundo. Kapag naabot mo na ang pangarap mo, anong susunod? When you finally get what you want, what's next? I am Chino Barachina. Follow me. And together, let's follow the money. Ano ba kung anong naabot mo ngayon? Masama bang maghangad ng mas marami? The pursuit of happiness and success for some people is a never-ending journey. Like Winston Churchill, mananatili silang gutom sa buhay. Kilalani ng espesyal nating panauhin ngayon, araw na to, matapos mapalago ang isang startup business sa Southeast Asia, heto at nagtatayo na naman ng isang panibagong negosyo na talaga abang-abang, lalo na sa mga kapatid nating magsasaka. This is Big Time, Big as in Business Inspiring Guest. Hi, Brian! Welcome to Follow the Money! Thank you, Hello. Hi, Hi, Hello. And I, <laughs> you are so You're so vibrant in that orange, Brian. Yan ba ang iyong uh, brand ngayon? Yeah, I was that, told it's the color of good luck. I see. At nakakatuwang isipin na, you know, um, you've gone to something na talagang, I can see, uh, it's a, if, not just with you, but it's a milestone for the, the Philippine setting, being the lead leader na nakilala ka bilang, you know, as grab. And now we'll talk about more of that. So, on your previous role first, What was the vision for Grab Philippines when you first took the role as country head? Well, when we started Grab, um, I actually started another company before we started Grab here in the Philippines. So I had the um, good fortune na mag-aral at magtrabaho sa Singapore for a number of years. Uh, and uh, I didn't have a car, so getting a taxi there was very easy was we have our smartphones on so we had to call but there was a um, call center like a proper call center that, that uh, would allow you to access thousands of taxis to be to book one of those thousands of taxis versus here there wasn't one phone number here in the philippines it was very fragmented and then we put the operator uh, each one with a few cars a few to hundred cars uh, so it's very difficult and uh, you always hear that safety was an issue Uh, when you ride taxis. So I, I wanted to sort of create a, a more reliable form of being able to call for a taxi. Uh, someone, so, uh, a way where you know, uh, passengers hindi sila matatakot because you create trust. Yeah. But before we started grabbing in the Philippines, um, I was based in Indonesia and started a company there called Gojek, uh, which was a motorcycle ride hailing company. Naman. Um, is, is it to, habal-habal? Similar right. to habal-habal. Okay. Um, but in Indonesia. Um, so mm-hmm. they were they were called objects. Or they are called objects there. Oh, so we started that. I learned um, I learned a lot from that experience. Uh, and then when I came back to Philippines, I was working on an e-commerce company. Um, you know, a year into that, uh, the idea of ride hailing here in the Philippines came up again. Uh, because uh, Anthony Tan, who was the founder of Grab uh, in Malaysia, came to Philippines uh, and was looking for a, a way to expand outside of Malaysia. 
and got together. It was an idea that I was already um, actively working on at that time. Uh, so we decided to just work work uh, on the problem together. Given that, naniniwala ka ba sa destiny? Uh, oh, naman. Yeah, I, I think that there are forces beyond us. Um, but, you know, I also believe that you know, we have to work hard for it. Hindi pwede yun. Uh, antayin na lang natin. And then can you walk us through some of the critical decisions that you personally made that you think you had significant contribution to Grab's growth here in the Philippines? Um, pretty much a lot of the decisions um, I, I had a hand in. Um, but it's hard to pinpoint no, any one critical decision. I think it was really in how the team was motivated in uh, um, in pushing the market forward uh, because ride hailing was something unfamiliar. Siyempre, lalo na kung private cars, di ba? Unang-una sa lahat, matatakot yung pasahero, unmarked yung vehicle. Bakit sila magtitiwala? Why Why is it safer than a, than a normal taxi where normal taxi is a phone number that you can call? Most of those phone numbers don't work, but, you know, it gives a perception <laughs> of safety. Yeah. Um, so on the passenger side, it was a big challenge. So we had to sort of educate the market a lot. And then on the driver side, we had to convince drivers that, you know, you can make money being a Grab driver and uh, you could um, control your time uh, and while, while working on a, like this type of gig economy work. So it was tough on both sides. And to add to that, you had a layer of competition in the form of Uber which came into the market for the private car service uh, earlier than we did in Grab. So, oh, yeah. makbakan talaga uh, mm-hmm. on the ground to get passengers, to get drivers. So, it was really tough in that sense. No? So, being so it wasn't one decision. It was a series of decisions that we make, that I would make with the team uh, in how to drive the business forward and how to mm-hmm. win market share away from your competitor. Shepard, you always want to be number one and the business um and you know there was that, that was really it I, I i guess if there was a mindset that we sort of stuck to was you can't please everyone so you had to choose your side choose your battle you, which did you choose <laughs> we chose the drivers we said you know make the driver happy make the passenger happier uh Make the passenger happy through the driver. So the whole the whole organization had had that mindset and was set up in a way na um, take care of the driver because they're the ones who are most immediately connected to you. Uh, yeah. Sila yung nakakausap mo more than the passenger. Then yung passenger nakakausap yung driver. So kung masaya yung driver, masaya si passenger. Um, Agree. And if you don't have supply, if you don't have enough drivers, then um, then you won't have passengers also. Yeah. Especially in a yeah. time when the Philippine government was, I guess, trying to figure out the regulations around ride hailing. Um, we made the decision that supply is more is the most important thing to fix. So the focus was there. It was really a challenge because in the beginning, they were there was a time na natatakot ang mga tao sa taxi especially if you know if they're going to go at night and then hindi mo alam kung sino matatapatan mo diba and there yeah. were cases na hold ups and you know yep. which you know was alarming so how yeah. did you tailor fit grabs uh, grabs products and services considering that the local riding culture and preferences of the filipinos and you could focus on two things like safety and affordability well you know, it goes both ways on China. Uh, when we started talking to the taxi drivers, um, sila rin hinuhold up ng pase. Yes, actually. Hindi lang, hindi lang yeah. passengers na hold up. But mm-hmm. these stories don't come out uh, mm-hmm. as much as the ones for mm-hmm. the passengers. So, even even with Grab, with the private ride daily, I've, I've had, you know, accidents, deaths, even hold ups uh, na, na targeting the driver. Right? So, Safety in the platform is for both passengers and drivers. Um, yeah. Of course, the drivers, uh, because they, 
interact with more unknowns. They interact with more passengers. No? One driver would interact with 20 random strangers in a day. Whereas one passenger would interact with one driver. One driver. One driver. So yes. um, it started with that core focus. No? So drivers had to have undergo a certain level of training, certain level of clearance before they could become a driver. Um, the picture of the person was shown in the app. Uh, the plate number of the car that's going to pick you up was there in the app. You could share your ride to a loved one um, to make sure that they can track your journey. Um, so, so there were features built um, that was dedicated towards safety. Alam you guys, hindi nyo, uh, to our audiences today, when I talked to, the, uh, to Brian the first time, nak- nakakatawa that he actually knows these things with the driver's concerns. Kasi kasama niya to, minsan, din, uh, you know, kinakausap niya, he goes to the ground and you know, relate to them. Brian, when you are talking to the drivers, how do you want, you know, what kind of like mentoring are you teaching them? Kasi makikita mo, diba, they're, they're, they are actively looking for passengers that their focus at their mindset and you on the other hand is an entrepreneur in what way do you think that you like you know influence them in having a mindset to to, to you know to earn more to increase their income was there a time that you have done that to them and shared th- some thoughts of th- the like with them yeah there, there's a bit of it that's inside the app so you give them incentives if they hit certain goals. So you gamify the experience. It's like wow. you know, when you're dealing with your colleagues, with your employees, uh, you want to make the environment of work um, serious but fun. Uh, serious, they need to do the work, they need to finish their tasks. Uh, but if they do it in a fun way, they'll put more heart into it. Uh, same with the driver. So we had a lot of in-app not just push it. it's a beauty of technology you could track you could monitor there's a lot more data it's, it's a lot of, a lot of the data allows you to have um a richer view on how a driver is performing um then beyond that you know on the offline discussions that i have with the drivers it's really to show them what's possible kung anong kaya. so like i would drive i would be a driver or day um, oh you would be a driver for a day yeah so i could feel it para pag kuusap pa sila sabihin nila hindi ka na pa nagda-drive paano mo alam yung pinagdadaanan namin so, ang ganda no na ang galing no facebook nun. live yun um, <laughs> bago pa ginawa ni yorme na sinimulan <laughs> oh so, ikaw pa niya rin siya <laughs> what, what year was that if, i can't remember anymore 2017 2016 uh-huh. yeah, yeah. And during the transition, nakita mo that there is a big and a huge competitor, which is Uber. How, yeah. What was your, what was your mindset during that time? Um, I know that, like in businesses, there has to be like a survival of the fittest. And how did you arrive of a conclusion that you know, uh, that brought you to the setup of Grab today? Yeah, there's a there's a saying, iron sharpens iron. So Uber was a very strong and uh, and uh, respectable competitor. Um, I respected them a lot in how they would do things. I respected the the team uh, over there. Uh, so we'd always look look at them, see what they were doing, and see what we can learn. Um, but also, there was a the goal to be number one, uh, to to really be at the dominant player in the market, which is something that you know, I, I personally feel strongly about in whatever business that I'm in. You want to be number one, you want to scale, you want to go big, um, and you want to make an impact. Uh, so with Uber there, you know, it was it was fun. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> it was fun competition. Um, tiring, but you know, it was very rewarding in terms of what we learned and how our, our company matured uh, because having that sort of benchmark, that global giant, global benchmark yeah. that we could learn from and, and put as a goalpost. Now, of- let's talk about na, the Sari Supi, which is your present business venture. Can you bring us back to its conceptualization? What inspired you to create an online platform that connects local producers and farmers directly with business bypassing traditional middlemen? 
Yeah. Um, so we started Sari Suki um, in 2021, um, uh, the height of the pandemic. It was one of those pandemic businesses. Uh, and, and the inspiration there was what my wife was doing. She was selling on Viber uh, in, in the local community Viber group. Uh, she was selling fruits and uh, frozen meats. Uh, and, you know, there was good, good enough traction. Um, in, I guess in access of the product and I saw how it kept her busy and sort of made her happy that she was doing it um, even though she wouldn't admit she would say it's very tiring but you know, <laughs> alam mo, we joy eh? we joy in being able to start something um, so we said why why not try to scale this up so I looked at models around the world and uh, the whole social commerce model was a model that Uh, was present in other markets said why not here in the philippines um, you know the conditions of uh people wanting to earn you know we're a big mlm type community yeah. here yeah. in the philippines it's effective so, talaga eh diba it's hindi man natin aminin para effective talaga na you know yung mga ganung scheme sa mga pinoy for some reason <laughs> so kailangan mo siyang sabayan uh, yeah, yeah. It, it works so Parang the market had the right conditions mm-hmm. uh, that we thought would lead to success, mm-hmm. um, and uh, and and that's how it started. But the focus really was in agriculture uh, for a couple of things. One, it was a daily product; uh, you don't store your gulay naman over a week, kasi uh, mo So it created. It was a product that had the potential to create habits that. Be interacting with the seller every day, with your community seller, uh, which can lead to you uh, to to um, your ability to sell other products to your community once that habit is built. Second, our agriculture in the Philippines. The more we got into it, so I was interested in agriculture when I was in Grab uh, already. When I met Senator Villar, I had the. the Um, opportunity to sit down with her over lunch and and she was telling us about agriculture the stories behind it and kawawa so so kawawa natin um, and and you hear it's a persistent it's a persistent problem that you'll hear every morning on the radio turn on your radio switch on to any am station they'll talk about two things transport and agriculture problem yes. sa gas ang mahal ng gas walang masakay kawawa pasahero In agriculture, sobrang mahal ng gulay, akit na ano presyo ng bilihin, smuggling of this product, that product. So it's it's a persistent problem and I feel that I've made an impact in transport and I feel that I can make an impact in agriculture. Wow. And, and, and the, the multiplier effects are huge, ha, Gina. Mm-hmm. It's huge. It's, it's, it will blow your mind on how how big we could potentially be um, if we just do the right things. Especially in agriculture, di ba, Brian? Kasi I'm looking at, there's one particular vlog that I've seen from, uh, I think, or one. He featured Calamansi. He's featuring agriculture products of the Philippines these days. And I found out that there was a huge decrease of you know tons and tons of calamansi are being produced for the past 10 years bumaba talaga it's because nagkakaroon na ng importation and also nung kinausap niya yung mga magsasaka doon pinakikita na yung mga calamansi mabilis mabulok so ngayon nagkakaroon ng advantage ang mga middleman na you know baratin yung mga presyo and having this kind of uh, app will actually ano even the the the, fl- the, the playing field in terms of you know having the right pricing range kasi sila yung nagsasaka eh diba sila yung naghihirap yeah. and then later on when you go to restaurants when you go to gulay pa yung pinakamahal kaya nakaka yes. diba nakaka ano lang isipin nakakalungkot isipin na there is uh, the the playing field is not that equal as of now and building this kind of app will actually you know bring things into perspe- into other perspective such as you know prioritizing yung mga magsasaka natin which is very nice and nakakatawa isipin na asawa mo pala yung isa sa mga you know nang nang formulate nito yes. uh, so parehas kayo ng mindset ng wife mo you, you have the same like real mindset what is she I, I, like what are you like she's my voice of reason 
Oh, okay. So, of the 100 ideas that I will pitch to her, baka isa lang papasad. Oh my gosh. Pero tignan nyo guys, ah, when he said that kinikilig pa siya. So how many years are you married, Brian? Uh, 13 years. Oh, 13 years. Nice. So if... And can you enlighten us, going back to Sarisuki, can you enlighten us more on the business side of Sarisuki? Because there are a lot of people who think that you said that you wanted to eliminate middlemen, which is, you know, alarming naman to the middlemen. But aren't the platforms like Sarisuki yeah. act as a new middlemen? Yeah, so the way I see it is, you know, the whole question about eliminating the middlemen <laughs> is not the goal. The goal is simplifying the supply chain. The middlemen have a role to play. Um, you know, like we cannot be everywhere all the time at once, right? So it's like Sari Sari stores. Sari Sari stores will always have a role to play in the community. They offer credit, they offer access to products, and they offer, you know, they break break up, you know, uh, a box of products into tingi tingi that allows more affordability. The second middleman will, I, I cannot buy a maybe a thousand trucks support the whole farming infrastructure of the country. Neither can the government. So just like Grab couldn't buy 50,000 cars to, you know, and hire 50,000 people, um, the middleman will have a role. But being able to simplify the uh, um, supply chain and give the farmers access, like what you said, to those Kalamansi farmers, will reduce information asymmetry and will reduce um, imbalances of power along that supply chain. Magiging patas. I like patas. that term. So, so, us replacing the middleman, honestly, that's margin shopping. There's no value being created. There might be value being created for our shareholders, but there's no value being created to the people. Right? It's either, okay, the middleman earns less, the farmer will earn more, or I will earn more. That's that's shuffling. That's not exciting. What yeah. is exciting is creating more stuff. Philippines per hectare, we know the price, right? We're half the productivity per hectare versus Vietnam. That's Which is funny, hectare. tayo ang nagturo niyan sa Southeast Asia. Right. And, and it's, you know, being in here in for, for the last two years looking into this, I've heard that so many times. But what people don't talk about is farming of high-value crops, vegetables, right? One kilo of talong, which is a staple, we consume, I think, 8,000 tons of talong a year in the country. Oh, sorry, 50 plus thousand tons of talong in the country. It's 56 million kilos. It's a lot of talong. And it costs around 90 pesos in the market. Mm -hmm. What will you buy? Talong or pure foods? Hot dog. So, <laughs> Ako, gusto ko gulay. <laughs> The thing is, gulay, like, <laughs> because, <laughs> the problem with it, guys, what you said, it's expensive. Why is yeah. it expensive? We are also producing half the yields of what a Vietnam can produce. We're producing an average 9 to 10 tons a hectare. Vietnam would be 17. 17 tons a hectare. So, yung palang, you can reduce your price by 40%. Problem number two, we don't have any post-harvest processing facilities. Post-harvest processing facilities allow you to reduce wastage along the supply chain. Pag makikita mo paano kinakarga yung gulay sa loob ng, ng truck, matatakot ka eh. Parang ayaw mo na mag, mag gulay. Saka, <laughs> magugulong yan. 40% of what's harvested gets wasted along the supply chain. So that's another area of savings. So now I'm not shuffling margins. We did a model farm. We did modern method of a modern method of farming. It's not a tech method, it's just more modern class, much in shape, nothing protected the crop a bit more. We produce 25% more than the traditional side um, for eggplants. Um, and we're testing it for, for other crops. If I can produce more out of the ground mm -hmm. and reduce wastage along the supply chain, I am printing money. I am creating something from nothing. But if I'm shuffling margins around. I'm, I'm just nagbabalasa lang tayo ng, it's the same deck of cards, right? We want to increase the pie. Increase the pie which leads to more affordable vegetables. Why? Because, like I said a while ago, there's a lot of multiplier effects of nutrition. Vegetables mm -hmm. gives you proper nutrition. 
the rate of stunting in the Philippines, in stunt, stunted growth, um, has not improved. So, for the last 30 years, it's still the same level of stunting. Filipinos. And then the rate of malnutrition and access to cheap food will affect education also later on. Yeah, development, brain not, development. Development, exactly. We may not feel it right now, but three generations from now, and then third, sustainable, sustainability in farming. I'm not talking about land being used and converted to other. I'm talking about land of our agricultural land, our, our, our fruit vegetable basket in, in Baguio. The mm -hmm. land there has been farmed out that the nutrients in the soil will run out in another two generations. Yeah. It affects our ability to support ourselves. We're not food secure. That's the that's the long and short of it. We are not food secure. So you you talk about these things. You can see the need also in the farming industry. Nakikita mo ba yung sarili mo from this agricultural app turning into something that pure agriculture talaga to have that whole picture put together? Because I'm I'm looking at you know me mga lupa talaga ngayon na acid. Mataas ang acidity ng lupa, kaya hindi na nagkakaroon ng magandang crops, hindi na nagkakaroon ng quality when it comes to sort of crops na, na harvest nila. Are you seeing yourself doing that also? So we are farming already ourselves. Um, through our partners, we have access to hundreds of hectares of, of land that currently is idle that we want to farm on. Uh, we want to prove that we can produce better yields on the same hectare, the same plot of land, uh, the same size of land, uh, can yield more. So once we prove that, hopefully the farmers that are beside us will say, Oi, okay yung ginawa nyo ah. Oh, lumakikita nyo. Um, pero wala akong kapital. Wala akong kapital to invest. Right? So that's where we come in. We say, okay, you know what? We'll help you. We'll give you a bit of, we'll put, put in the capex on your land. You farm, you achieve higher yields. We'll so we'll work out a commercial model where you benefit, we benefit, and you know, the country's better off um, after it. Ilang percent, Brian, yung sa farmers, and then ilang percent yung sa platform? Just, is, is it okay to, uh, no? to um So it? right now, we buy at farm gate prices. So whatever uh, okay. the farm gate price is, we'll buy at farm gate. Ah, uh, I see, I see. So, um, nakakatawa, no? when I'm listening to you, I can hear two things. You built a community of taxi drivers and you, you're now building a community of farmers and also a community that can do the barter sort of na parang, parang kadiwa in a community na magkakaroon sila ng bentahan within na sila-sila. And um, in, in this case, you have seen how the farmer's mindset is, you have seen the driver's farmers uh, driver's mindset is, ano yung gusto mo, ano yung nakikita mong um, similarity and ano yung gusto mong i-influence sa kanila uh, looking at this similarities so they can uh, love they can, uh, ano, an advance in their life uh, in, in, in the next generation. A lot of them are very short-term and opportunistic. They think, you know, this to harvest ko, it's not very long-term. So I can understand you know, the position that they've been put in, um, in in the you know the media how they're portrayed. Um, it, it it really weighs down. Parang a driver ka lang or hampas lupa or you know, the, the way the way they've been portrayed in society uh, does not help. The average age of a farmer is fifty nine years old. Who's gonna farm? Wow. Average. Many years. So, you know, how do we make farming exciting uh, or not, not just exciting, but freeing? But, um, liberating. It's a career. You know, career. Yeah, liberating. Exactly. How do you make, how do you remove the shackles of perception, of the negative perception of farming um, to get the next generation to come in? And, and it, you know, if I, I, I was... I was able to go to New Zealand on a um, sponsored trip to visit farms and and talk to like industry practitioners there. Makita mo doon, mga college graduates, they're all very proud of being agriculturalists, farmers. Um, they, the, the level of technology and sophistication that 
they will apply um, is, is decades ahead of us. They're thinking about, you know, sustainability and and sort of like greenhouse gases being emitted and how, how to reduce mm-hmm. that. Not not about yields. So tomato farming, for example, in we we often hear here that ay yung mga tomatis na bubulok na sa sayang. So wasted wasted yun. Pero yung yeah. tomato farming sa sa New Zealand is only suffers two percent loss versus wow wow so, why why because they just have a better supply chain because someone invested in it with the with the thinking they have a lower population eh, compared to us so the Correct. consumption is really low I mean it should Correct. be low than than our consumption is right so in 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 that sense in that sense um is it talking of, I mean I've seen how you build businesses I've I think you 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 started businesses from you know on the get go and you've been building it Is it a sin to always be hungry in life that to never be contented and satisfied What do you think of that Uh I wouldn't say it's a sin it's mm-hmm. tiring nakapagod <laughs> it should uh, yeah. nakapagod for people around you yeah so, are you an introvert uh, or an extrovert i enjoy quiet times but i get anxious if it's too quiet so i think i think i'm, I'm uh, different <laughs> yeah i i guess depends on who i'm with but in sense of contentment uh, and and what's your take on that oh my god that's very existential um i think it, it differs for for different people for some people who are always on the go um get they get a kick out of i get a kick out of starting new things um and seeing it grow seeing it turn into something uh, it's much like I think, for the people who are uh, parents or have kids like seeing your kid grow um and and watching it mature and learn things and being able to do things themselves it's that for me is very exciting um but for other people they they're also content um getting direction from someone and there's nothing wrong with that uh, they can get paid really well they can earn you know um a good, a good make a good living um but not have the stresses of you know an entrepreneur um <laughs> they're also content so it really differs um, for different people but it's not a sin to be humble. It's not a sin to want more, to want to learn more, to want to be. I'd say it would be a sin if you did not want to grow in life. We're given one life. We're given I one agree. life. We want to make the most of it. How do you make the most of it? Get out there, absorb as much as you can, learn and live to, what, live to the fullest extent. Right? You know what? Before, when I think about being noble and say, gusto ko lang ng simpleng buhay, it was noble for me before, but then when I realize how much or how many people can you can help if you have like a bigger pie to share. For me, when you say "gusto ko lang ng simpleng buhay," it's like being selfish because you're just living bit within your means. If you are given like a gift of you know sharing it to the world, having that kind of mind, uh, you know that kind of talent that can build um, work and can you know can build people to to have work then that's not you know that's not that's not being uh, selfish at all now my last question for this part is both grab and sars who can harness the potential of technology and internet to change the playing field what's your advice to the young generation the online generation who are also planning to put up a business um you know just do it uh don't don't try to get into analysis paralysis uh if you're putting up a, you know, a business that, that wants to sell a product there are so many platforms out there already uh, you have Zada, shopee tiktok shop uh, that could be used it's very different from let's say 20 years ago when i was in college and we wanted to start a business where would we sell it oh kailangan either may sarili kang tindahan or kailangan kausapin mo yung um, supermarket or yung department store para lang makabenta 
now you know it's become so easy to start up a small business um i would advise anyone that wants to start dream big but start small uh there's nothing wrong with that everything starts from a seed or whether it's an idea whether it's a business you get to learn things how to manage money how to manage people how to deal with the local barangay permits how to deal with you know uh, bir uh, and all those little things you know, that is not fun but having the chance to go through that at least once you go through it para alam mo when you make your business big because if you forget all these little things uh, you'll be starting off with a rocky foundation all right that's a very insightful brian now we bring you to the happy uh, and then the next part of the segment which is like a little game for you uh, this is fast talk So on top of mind, just one liner answer. Give me top three jobs that you think deserve a higher salary or super unpaid right now. Three jobs. Trash collector, farmers, I guess similar to the first one, like janitorial services. All right. True or false, the end justify the means? No, doesn't. Save and budget or earn more to spend more? Earn more to spend. <laughs> what age did you reach your first million? Peso dollars. Oh, okay. Peso and dollar. Ah, <laughs> uh, wala pa eh. <laughs> ah, peso, peso. Peso, I'd say thirty thirties. Okay. Last so available what, flight. So ask you at what age I lost that first million. Maybe maybe a few days after I earned it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Last available flight on Earth, where will you go? To Mars, so I can... <laughs> Complete the sentence. The Philippine needs more blank. More support from its government. <laughs> What's your pet peeve? People asking me, can I work from home? <laughs> your stress reliever. Golf. Oh. Complete yeah, the sentence. Good. This is not necessarily the one in from the Bible, but complete the sentence. What is your truth with this? Money is the root of all blank. Stress. Now let's move on to the three essential tips the money fest. Ayan. So ano na ang ibibigay mo? Uh, how to money fest the three essential tips, Brian? Uh always keep an eye on cash flows. Cash flow is very important. Um, it's more important than your PNL. Because you can be negative with a positive cash flow uh, that allows you to to grow. Um, so that's number one. Number two is yes, surround yourself with people always better than you. Um, always strive, be, be, have that humility to to want to learn. Whether it's about how to manage your business, how to invest your money, um, it's always good to learn uh, and absorb. Uh, and then three, always assume in whatever business that there will be pilferage and theft. So at the very start, try to implement processes uh, and policies that can allow you to audit and check for whatever business, however small it is. All right. Thank you so much, Brian. It's so, it's so much a pleasure to, you know, to grace with us with your presence today and i hope that you know this is going to be the beginning of us hearing more and more improvement on you, you know and on farming and also on you know on the businesses that you want to venture to thank you thank you see you soon
taong stubborn enough to start from scratch. Brian is one of them. Hindi takot magtayo ng mga bagong negosyo kahit walang kasiguraduhan kung magtatagumpay ba ito or hindi. Pero paano kung hindi ka pahandang sumugal ng ganong kalaki? The answer is the Philippine stock market. Buy shares of existing companies, hindi mo na kailangan mo problema ng permits or presto ng empleyado at kung ano-ano pa like what Brian said a while ago. You just need to open an online trading account using your mobile phone or you can start owning shares from some of the biggest companies in the country. This is Fearless Forecast. Our guest today is the millennial trader Harold Tan. Harold embarked on his stock journey at the tender age of nine years old, guided by his dad. Fast forward to college, pursuing a BS in computer engineering, he jumped into trading with a GPA defying spirit, consistently profitable for five years now. Not just a trader, Harold is a mentor, a public icon on Facebook and YouTube, and sought after speaker for schools and TV shows. But here's the twist. He's also an author. His book spills trading secrets, system, and reveals a jaw-dropping 1,632% profit in 2020 to 2021 alone, weathering the storm of the pandemic. Harold's expertise lies in momentum plays, IPOs, ceilings, and those thrilling bounce plays. Get ready for a journey into the mind of a trading maestro, Harold Tan, the millennial trader. This is Fearless Forecast. Hi, Hernan! Welcome to Fearless Forecast and follow the money. It looks great with your outfit today. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, see, si, ano po si Sir Hernan is the millennial trader. If you can uh, look at his page, so Hernan, what is your fearless forecast? Uh, right now, if you look at the index for the PSCI, actually, before we start the year 2024, if you are trying to give me some pressure because. Uh, if you're, Parang the fearless forecast that I'm giving today is trying to set the tone for the rest of the year. So as you can see, for the last 2023, we are technically in a downtrend position. So again, uh, my my fearless forecast, even though if you are if you are if you are following my work, uh, I have been keeping on repeating the same lines. Na we would be having a pivotal point. Pagdating ng third quarter or even fourth quarter but 2024 will be a very bull bullish market so next one next slide please so these are my projections so for 2024 projection i can have a worst case scenario we would uh, be able to revisit the 5800 level that might be the case if we would not be able to hold the 6200 level na uh, support the best case scenario naman is we could be able to hit 7800 level when we hold the 6200 and never traded below that. So this is doable when the following prerequisites are achieved. So next slide please. So as you can see, how do we get there? Meron tayong better inflation numbers. So, ano nga pa yung inflation number? So, madalas naririnig natin, uh, China, no? pagtaas ng bilihin, which is correct naman siya no? in layman's term. Pero in our term, as analyst, ang inflation numbers is yung, yung paghina ng purchasing power mo, di ba? So, for example, past 10 years ago, ang isang mansanas, you could buy it at around 20 pesos. Today, kumpare, 30 pesos na siya. Kasi humina yung purchasing power mo, you need more money in order to buy the same amount of goods and services, same quality then as well. So, if you wait, if you go back to the history, di ba, kung maalala mo yung panahon ng Japan and the Philippine and Japanese war, di ba, yung isang loaf bread dati, you need a one sack of Mickey Mouse money, no? If, if my history... Yeah, I remember left, Mickey Mouse money. Yes, if, you, if if our history lessons are intact, I, I think you need one sack, isang sakong pera. Kasi walang value yung pera, mahina yung purchasing power niya. Eh. So, 
ganun din, no? I I don't think pupunta tayo sa ganung kalala itong Pilipinas, pero parang ganun siya, no? Dahil mahina yung peso natin, we need more peso to buy the same uh, goods and services, same quality as well. So, as you can see, November 2023 inflation eases to 4.1 which is very good. Kahit pa paano malapit na siya sa target ng uh, ng ng BSPN as well as the PSA na 2 to 4%. Then of course, uh, affordable basic commodities, di ba? Yung gulay, yung kaninang guest niya, di ba? He's talking about farming, napakamahal ng mga gulay. So, of course, magiging problema din yan. Uh, next thing, kapag maayos na yung inflation numbers natin, interest rate cuts. Susunod na yan. Uh, with the Fed rate cut, won't happen until second half of 2024. So, yung pag-pause and pag-maintain ng rates, that would be the early signal for eventual easing of rates. So, ano nga ba, or paano ba nakaka-apekto yung interest, no? So, ibig sabihin, kunwari ako, as a business owner, I cannot uh, loan, di ba? Or I can loan, but at a higher interest rate. So, kung ang interest, kunwari, ng bank ko, ng, ng binibigay ng central bank is 6.5%, which is sa mga banks, higher pa rin yan. So, ako, madi-discourage ako mangutang. So, my growth will be tapered. Instead na marami pa akong initiative or innovative ideas na pwede kong i-launch or simulan, hindi ko muna masisimulan. Ipo-postpone ko siya kasi mahal ang interest rates. So, one thing, especially with interest rates, yan yung advice ko din sa mga advisory circle ko, even last year, na if you are planning to buy condo, if you are planning to buy property, ano muna, uh, yes. uh, paliban mo muna. Kasi, right now, lalo na yung mga dynamic interest. Ibig sabihin, kung ano yung interest ng central bank, yun din yung ipapataw na interest sa iyo. So, medyo masakit yun. Mas okay yung fix, di ba? So, sabi ko, pause muna kasi this is not the right time. Interest are too high and it will likely to go up. But right now, this is a different story. For 2024, pag nakita natin yung mga signs of pausing and maintaining rates and eventually easing, then of course, magiging mas maganda. And third one, as we can see, no, last 2023, we have a so many geopolitical risks. Meron tayong Israel and Hamas before the year ends. And meron tayong China and Taiwan tension, di ba? And meron din yung China versus Philippines, di ba? So, meron din yung Ukraine and Russia, di ba? Uh, before we get started with the 2023. So, yung mga ganyan, as an investor, syempre, they're, they're, they most, most likely would not invest in our country kapag may mga risk na katulad ng ganyan. May mga uncertainties. Ayaw ng mga investors yan. So, next slide, please. Yan. So, para sa mga, ano, very quick lang nating i-brush ang gold features na feature natin to ng mga previous episode. And now, um, in a medium-term perspective, Renan, what can you say? Uh, for gold, I don't see it uh, going strong. I think the rally is short-lived. Bakit ko sinama yung gold here? Kasi on the prospect na, for example, pagka, Tumataas ang gold because gold is a safe haven. Tumataas ang gold, meaning to say, yung equity market, yung risk market, bumabagsak. Kaya yung people, yung mga tao, pumunta po sa gold. However, pag gold market is going down, syempre, ayaw ng tao pumunta sa gold, they will try to risk their money on riskier assets like equities. So, what I'm telling is, or what I'm seeing with the gold futures right now is, the uptrend, as you can see, gumagawa siya ng all-time high dyan, is not likely to be sustainable. Kasi, as we all hear, di ba, sa mga ibang uh, nagtuturo or mga traders and analysts also, na kapag breakout, you should buy. Which is partially true. Kasi, we have to determine a stock or even a commodity prices or security prices which are strong outside but weak inside compare sa weak outside, strong inside. So with gold futures, it is strong outside but weak inside. And eventually, I, I believe it will fall. So, pag bumagsak... Bakit yung weak inside? Uh, there are so many parameters, technically, na kapag sinilip natin, halata ang pilip yung pagkaka-breakout. And as you can see, dyan sa 
chart, di ba? We ended up a shooting star candle. That uh, before the market closed, doon sa gold futures actually gap up yet. And then I pre- we predicted na magpo-close yung gap. So it, it ended up that way. So ibig sabihin, the gold prices uh, went as high as that ma- as that mark and then eventually bin- binuhusan, sinold out. So ibig sabihin, hindi kinayanan ng mga buyers. So that is a exhaustive move kung kaya tawag ko. So ba- parang umakit yung price pero pilit na pilit. So uh, strong outside but weak inside. Kung baga, malakas siya tignan in a first glance pero kapag if you investigate deeper, if you look another chart, if you look and compare to other uh, market, you will know na hindi na siya ganun kalakas. So eventually, kapag kababagsak yung gold, and what will happen next? Yung equity market will pick up. Diba? So next slide, please. So as you can see, the dollar index here, uh, it, it can go as low as 100 uh, points. So why I'm telling this is because kapag nakita ng US Central Bank na bumabagsak yung, 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 yung dollar nila, hindi na, humihina yung dollar nila, they will, what will they, what will they do is they will tame the ano the interest rates so para at least lumakas ulit yung ekonomiya magkaroon ng growth so in that sense diba pagka pinagtagpi-tagpi mo yung picture and even with the next one which is the ph uh, 10 year treasury year is makikita mo na pabagsak din yung 10 year treasury so in this sense na if you look at the 10 year treasury it is at around 6.3% So, ibig sabihin, ako, wala akong gagawin. I'll just invest in the 10-year treasury and I'll yield uh, 6%, di ba? So, yan yung magiging benchmark ko. Ngayon, if I will invest in the stock market and I will not get 6% or above, so, madi-discourage ako at may trabaho pa akong gagawin, di ba? Kapag ka nag-invest ako sa stocks, stock market. So, if the 10-year treasury yield will go down like to 4% to 5 and even 4%, syempre, maglilipatan yung mga tao doon sa uh, equity market. So, that's that's the reason if we try to connect the dots together along with the gold, may kita mo na the, the gold has the possibility to weaken. The interest rates, the treasury yields will have to weaken. The Fed Federal will later on uh, try to uh, cut their rates and eventually our inflation will will be having a better numbers and and our BSD will uh, cut their uh, rates as well to mirror the trend. So, we will have a better market. So, right. yeah. So, that's my uh, take. And last stock is PHR. So, this is another fearless forecast for me. No, uh, This is a highly speculative, high risk, high return trade. So, disclaimer lang po. So, po pwedeng mag-work siya, po pwedeng hindi. Pero if you know how to trade this, it is a simple breakout. Buy on breakout at 104. Ibenta mo ng 140. You will have a, I think, 30% gain from that uh, range itself kung tama yung calculation ko. If you are more aggressive, you could buy it at around, I think, 0.89 uh, or 0.89. So, PHR, that's Hernan's fearless forecast. All right, Hernan. Before you leave, sorry, before you leave, we, I will, I'm going to show you a meme and tell me uh, how much can you relate to this or what is the lesson behind this meme? Why was it created? The meme is when you start losing money, b- but you know it's only temporary. <laughs> so, can you relate to this? Actually, similar to what you said. Of course, uh, actually, I'll give it to the perspective na if you are a consistently profitable trader, you have a trading system. Lahat po ng business, even trading and investing, if you treat it as a business, you will uh, lose money. But the important thing, how do you do on the end of the month, on the end of the year? Kasi that will justify kung tama ba yung ginagawa mo. You can lose money in a day, you can lose money in a week, but make sure you don't lose money in a month, in a quarter, in a year. So, yun. Thank you so much, Hernan. That's very, uh, very important for our traders to know 
uh, and alam mo minsan kasi nga di ba may mga tinatawag din na uh, paper loss lang so kung hindi pa nila binibenta temporary lang din siya so it's it's nice that you have put two and two together and thank you so much and i hope this is not the last time yes, yes. thank you thank you If success is not final, failure is not fatal. Yan ang kabuang sinabi ni Winston Churchill. Huwag kang matakot magkamali. Tuloy lang ang pag-abot ng pangarap. At pag naabot mo na kung ano man ang gusto mong marating sa buhay, mangarap ka ulit. Mangarap ka ng panibago. Mangarap ka ng mas malaki. Sabi nga ni Steve Jobs, stay hungry. Kung dati, pag dumating ang break mo, kagatin mo na lang. Ngayon, pag dumating ang break mo, ubusin mo at huwag kang magtitira. Because now in the digital age, there is no enough, not, there is enough for everybody. I am China Barachina and follow me, follow your dreams and the money will follow right after. Thank you so much and God bless everyone.